every time I listen to that song, I hear a different line and I listen to that for a second and then I ponder it. Then I'm like, oh yeah, she's moved on on a different part. Um, <laughs> I know. I'm like, wait, oh yeah, she said that. Okay. Yeah. She said that one too. Um, the one that caught me this time was about like, if she lets everything in and that she like all of the weighty stuff that's going on in the world, if she lets that in, then she's lost the fight because she just is weighted down and can't handle things. And I was like, yeah, um, that's great for today with the whole uh, theme of energy and the energetic, limitless energy of spirit. Um, <laughs> the first line of the statement today is what really stuck with me. And it was the limitless energy of spirit flows through me. And that just kind of was what I have mulled over for the last little while in preparation for this talk. It's been an unbelievable couple of weeks. I've contemplated this topic so many times knowing that I'd soon have my opportunity to share my thoughts and my inspirations with you guys. My first thought was about how energy is neither created nor destroyed. That energy just is and it moves constantly from one form to another through each one of us. And I thought about how we're all part of that infinite energy, right? I am in you and you are in me. Like we are absolutely 100% connected and united on that energetic, beautiful level. And it's easy to get lost in the enormity and yet the simplicity of that fact. I remember the very first time that I realized that I'm connected to you. I'm connected to everything. And I was like, that is so cool. And it's so simple. And then later it was like, wait, that is so big and that's mind blowing and I don't know how to deal with that. The, the concept of energy was so, I don't know, simple and difficult at the same time. I think these bodies that we live in keep us separate and it helps hide the fact that we are connected. It helps us think that we are individual, that we are unique and that's what feeds into our egoistic nature right? We think there has to be some kind of hierarchy, right? Somebody has to be better than, somebody has to be less than. Somebody has to be a winner, somebody has to be a loser. We are constantly figuring out our relationships with each other and how we fit together. Instead of looking at how we are united and connected, we're looking at, am I subservient to you or am I like, where does all that fit? And the energy that's within us, this divine energy that we have living, residing really doesn't care because it sees the divinity and the beauty within each and every one of us. And yet, because we have a physical body, that is where the challenge comes in of finding ourselves so separate. The limitless energy of spirit flows through me. My next thought was, if energy isn't created or destroyed and it's constantly fluid, then that means that emotions and the energy from the emotions that I have felt or do feel, you have felt too at some point, whether you feel it before I do or after I do, and vice versa. I have felt what you have experienced. I have been there. I have gone through it on some level because my energy understands and knows it is flowing through each one of us beings. I recently co-facilitated a sacred circle with a friend. And this is a gathering of people and we are doing personal work. And we're pulling wisdom from the book, uh, Wayne Dyer's Happiness is the Way. And in this book, he talks about the fact that our thoughts come before our emotions. We have a thought and then the emotion follows, which means that if we can control our thoughts, then we can also control our emotions. So you get it, go to the store and you get in line and you get in what you think is the fastest line because you have too much to really self-check. So you're like, I'm going to get in what I think is the fastest line, right? You get in this line, it's moving, you're doing good, you've unloaded your cart, you've got a couple of people behind you, and the, car, the line comes to a screeching halt. You are the next person, but the person in front of you has a whole bunch of coupons and is 
not happy with the listed price of the cheese compared to what it rang up as, and you're just kind of standing there. And as you stand there, you see that people in the other lines that you did not choose are now now checked out and headed to their cars. And you're standing there and you are getting caught up in the fact that everyone else is moving around with their day. Everyone else gets to move on and you are stuck between this person and freedom. This, this person is blocking your path. Now, in that moment, if you apply Wayne Dyer, then you have this ability to say, okay, I am really frustrated and you're just going to simmer on that and you're going to bring more emotion to the fact that you are irritated with the perceived incompetency in front of you and that will just build and the cashier is going to feel it and the person buying groceries is going to feel it and you are sending that energy out and everyone is just kind of and cranky, right? Wayne Dyer. Thoughts and emotions. Okay. So if I stop and I recognize that I'm a little irritated because my line's not moving anymore, and as a human being, I want to be moving, I'm going to pause. I might initially be annoyed that everybody else is checking out and I'm still stuck here. But then I can look and say, wait, they're using a lot of coupons and they're worried about the listed price of cheese. Maybe... Maybe they're financially struggling. And in that moment, you have a gift because you can look at it and say, I have gratitude for my abundance and the gift that I have, which means that because you now have gratitude and you've chosen a different path, you are putting love and compassion forward to the checker and this person that's checking out and struggling. You've completely changed that dynamic that could have been a downfall. You have given that limitless energy where we are all connected to them. And in so doing, you have given yourself a gift and you've given that other person a gift. The checker's not as stressed out because you're not standing there ticked off. That person goes to their car and they don't feel as horrible because you didn't care. You may have decided you wanted a candy bar or it was enjoyable to read the tablet, whatever it is that you decided to do. And you get to leave feeling a little more energetic because you gave energy, you gave love, you gave compassion to that person in front of you. Applying the ability to change our thoughts and control our emotions means that I can fuel everyone around me with whatever energy I choose to embody, whatever energy I choose to let flow with me, flow through me. I get to use the divine energy to bless others. I get to bring about a more pleasing emotional outcome. And if we go back to the idea that the emotions that I'm feeling are going to be emotions that you're feeling and emotions that you're feeling, and if I'm standing in line feeling gratitude, how does that change other people's? Will she also feel gratitude because you weren't cranky? Will they also feel gratitude for something else in life? It's a beautiful, simple, simple way for each and every one of us to affect and bless humanity. The limitless energy of spirit flows through me. Have you ever heard the phrase, karma came back and kicked me in the arse? (laughs) If the energy is flowing through you and you are choosing to send out this stuff, And that energy is going to flow through you. It will flow through other people. Does it not make sense that it's going to come back to you? Does it not make sense that what you put out there will eventually find its way come positive or negative? If I choose to send out love and kindness and acceptance, what will be returned? The last couple of weeks have been a real challenge for me. Mentally and emotionally, it has been a whoop de whoop um, <laughs> doozy. And I'll explain. Years and years and years ago, I decided to dive into family history. And I have been transposing my grandmother's journal. She kept a journal every day of her life from 12 years old on. Honestly. Yeah. So I thought that it would be wonderful and a beautiful gift to transcribe these 
so that all of my family could have them instead of it being in a book that only one person had in their closet. Everybody could read it if they wanted to. Now, I was newly married in a beautiful relationship. My kids were in middle school and high school. I was doing really well. I was happy. Life was good in this space and time. And I'm transposing these journals or transcribing them. I'm doing my thing. And for some reason, I was feeling a little emotional and a little down, and I couldn't really understand or explain why. There wasn't really any reason why. At this time, I was also doing a whole bunch of new spiritual work, and I had just realized that those voices that I had heard for so many years were actually my spirit guides saying, hey, let us help you. And I was listening to them and I was letting them guide me and lead me in the best paths possible. And it was so beautiful and such a wonderful opportunity for me in my life. And it was a gift, right? Well, through this, I realized that my grandmother ended the majority of her entries of her journal with, I am worn and weary. I am depressed. I am lonely. I was taking the emotion, the energy that my grandmother had and she had put into these journals and they were becoming a part of me because I was typing this. Now, recently I decided to pick these journals back up, recognizing that this was something that might happen, recognizing that grandma had this thing and that's okay and that's all right. And I'm going to put boundaries up and I'm going to protect myself, acknowledging that this is my my grandmother's experience, not mine, right? Because there are some things coming up in her life that I know about and I'm really hopeful and excited that perhaps things will turn around and she'll be a little more joyous and energetic in her life. And I want to see that and I want to be a part of that. So I want to go there, but I also want to protect myself with the taking on and rewriting that over and over again. So I've recently picked that up. I've been typing. And then my mom, I am the caregiver for my mom, and she's recently taken a bit of a turn. And so we are talking about palliative care for her. These two things coming together created an emotional whirlwind of a challenge for me. Here I am getting ready to give a talk on the limitless energy that flows through me and how I can buoy up and how I can bounce and love life and be very energetic throughout what's going on. And yet I felt more like I was swimming through the depths and desperately trying to find a ledge that I could cling to so that I could just breathe for a minute. How am I supposed to come here and speak with you about the limitless energy when my own energy was very challenged and had been very tapped? When I think of the energy um, of spirit, my brain really, really, really wants to go to this very beautiful, lighthearted, uplifting, joyous energy, this gift. And I think that that's absolutely correct and that's true. But with that concept and with my challenges, I was feeling, like I said, very inadequate coming and talking to you today. But Several little nuggets of wisdom came through in the last couple of weeks, and I want to share some of them with you because they make me smile, and it's just great. Some of these nuggets of wisdom are actually things that I have said that have come back at me. Have you ever had that happen? (laughs) You say it, it comes back. Just like karma. You do it, it comes right back at you. Um, One of them was, if you're feeling down and lacking energy, go do something. It may sound counterintuitive to get up off the couch and go do something, and yet when you do it, you have more. Like, energy begets energy, and you feel a little bit better. Um, Find gratitude, and the sadness will be lessened. The weight will be lighter. My husband has asked me this. I have asked him this. We have asked other people this. When somebody is talking to me, and they're down, and they're really having a rough day, the question is, so what good happened today? What positive thing is there? How can we shift that energy from this really sucks to something better? You're embracing that energy that is available and coming through you and choosing to do something different. What actions or self-care can you do to turn this around? What will bring you joy right now and how can you apply that immediately? So my own words are coming back to me. And then I receive even more notes from this inspirational calendar that I got for Christmas. 
And um, one of them is uh, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. Isn't that really good? Life is 10% of what happens. This is life is going to happen. Life is going to life. That's just the way it is. 90% of that is how you react to it. Where do you go with that? What emotion, what meaning do you apply to it? What energy do you choose to say this is what it is? This is where it's going to go. At one point, I just thought, how am I? I just, I can't do it. It's impossible. Audrey Hepburn came in and she said, nothing is impossible. The word itself is I'm possible. (laughs) Isn't that a good light? Audrey Hepburn, nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. Then Serena Williams comes in and she says, a champion is defined not by their wins, but how they deal with their losses. Every one of us trips and falls. Every one of us has a challenge. Every one of us has to deal with a loved one, a challenge in the middle of the night. And how do we deal with that? Right? How do we work through it? They're all wonderful reminders centered around the fact that we are human. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And part of that experience is learning and growth. In my ruminations about uh, my ability to do justice to this talk today, I really sat back for a moment and thought about what a gift this time that we have is. Our energy was placed within this physical body so that we would have the opportunity to experience everything that a human can experience. Without this human body, we can't feel and touch. We can't taste. We can't laugh. All of the emotions that we go through, the ups and the downs, the entire vast array, we cannot experience if we don't have the mind that has the thoughts and the emotions that react to that and how we move through this day. It's just amazing to me what a gift that this opportunity is. Every challenging emotion that I had over the past couple of weeks is an opportunity with that limitless energy flowing through me for me to learn and experience and grow. What a gift. So I want to hail back to those inspirational quotes. Life is 10% of what happens to me and 90% of how I react to it. With my opportunity to experience all of this stuff, I've taken it in and I've acknowledged it. Because if you don't acknowledge it, you're not going to improve. Like you have to acknowledge it. Otherwise, you're shoving it under the rug. So what did I do with it? My husband and I went dancing a couple of times. We went and played pickleball a few times. We, um, we, I watched movies with my mom to lift her up because she was down and struggling. So I was like, let's watch Goonies. Let's watch um, Beetlejuice. Let's watch some of those cute, feel-good movies that kind of make you laugh. And I'm just giggling off to the side the whole time and doing puzzles. And I took a bath. So instead of sitting on the couch and saying, I just can't do this, I did something. I chose to let the energy give me a little more, right? That doesn't mean that I didn't sit down and cry or take a break or just be a bump on a log for a little bit because I did those things too. And yet I still allowed them to move instead of letting them get stuck and stay right there. Do you know what the etymology of the word energy is? Do you want to know? (laughs) Energy comes from Greek. N is in or within. Ergon is work. Energy literally means the work within. Right? Think about it. When you you take that opening statement and you say, the limitless energy of spirit flows through me. And you apply the meaning, the limitless inner work of spirit flows through me. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. We are constantly learning. We have inner work to do all the time. Right? Always. We have that choice. We have that conscious, intentional 
action behind what comes through. We are here to learn and grow, to love and improve from infancy through adulthood to our physical end and release of this housed energy. We're learning to do the inner work necessary to be the best humans that we can be. I don't have to be happy-go-lucky and bouncing around all of the time. None of us do. I don't have to smile through my tears because sometimes I just need to ugly cry. (laughs) And that's okay. The fact that I allow myself to cry, the fact that I allow myself that break is the fact that I am doing inner work that I am choosing to process, that I am choosing to let that energy flow. If I don't do anything, if I hadn't gone and played pickleball, if I hadn't gone dancing with my husband, if I hadn't done a puzzle and moved the energy, then I would be stuck. The energy flows through me. Uh, Where am I at? I don't know. flow see it flew it it flowed right through me and then I'm um uh Serena Williams back to her statement of being defined not by your wins but how you recover when you fall we are all going to fall even the happy go luckiest person in the world is going to trip and be challenged in life you don't know joy if you haven't experienced the other side of that coin There is no way that you can enjoy the up, excited nature of life if you don't know that there is another part of life that is not so happy. Don't let it hold you down. Tap into the energy of spirit. Tie on your tennis shoes or your dancing shoes and say, I acknowledge the human experience I'm having. And instead of sitting on the couch, I'm going to move. I want to share a little side note for you. When we went and played pickleball, it was 10 o'clock in the morning, yesterday morning. This was just yesterday morning. It's 10 o'clock. And on the one hand, I was still in my pajamas at 9.15. <laughs> and I really kind of just wanted to curl up on the couch and take another nap at 9 o'clock in the morning. But instead, I was like, I know I'm going to feel better I'm consciously making the choice because I know I will feel better if I go and move. So I'm going to go, but what is my intention while I go? And I walked in there. My intention was to have fun and be the kind of person somebody wants to play with. Everything else is a bonus. I don't care about anything else. I know I'm going to laugh. I know I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to have fun. Every time somebody came on my court, because you're always rotating, which meant that you always had new people, I would make a big announcement to the entire court. Okay, guys, my goal is to have fun. I hope you're on board with that. Anything else is a bonus. They all knew. I just wanted to have fun. And I would encourage everyone. If they had a bad shot, I'd say, hey, you'll get it next time. Don't worry about it. I used their names and lifted them up. If they gave a bad, a good shot that like I could not get, I was like, hey, nice job. Instead of being cranky that they had totally aced past me, right? I chose to be that person, even though energetically I was feeling less than. And anytime one of those thoughts came into my head about emotionally and the challenges that I was going through, I said, I see you. I acknowledge you. I'm playing a game right now. And I went back to playing my game. The most beautiful thing happened. We finished. We had 11 minutes left or 12 minutes left. And I was like, is anyone going to come on the court to play this last game? And this very tall Amazonian lady comes on and she had been riding with this other woman. And the other woman was in this white puffy jacket and she was kind of like, okay, fine. We're playing again. So she comes on the court and I make my announcement. I'm here to have fun. Let's have a great time. Everything else is a bonus. And we played. This was that woman's first time playing in a group. And she had had less than enjoyable experiences with other people who were less than thrilled with her beginner status. And as she was getting ready to leave, not realizing they were going to play another game, she was thinking, I don't, I don't need this. I don't need this. I'm not going to play. 
But her friend drags her on the court so they can play one more game. And it's on my court. I'm about having fun. I want to be the person you want to play with. Encouraged her, coached her. Everyone laughed. Everyone had a great time. We encouraged each other when we had a bad shot and when we had a good shot. And when we got off that court, you know what she told me? She told me her story and then she said, you know what? I'm coming back again. Thank you for changing that around. The energy flows through me. I had a choice in that moment. I could have stayed on the couch and been a bum on the log. I absolutely could have chosen to stay home, but I chose instead to give myself the energy by choosing to move and let it flow through. It nods back to karma. What I choose to give out will come back to me. Um, okay. Looking at the idea of the energy of spirit, being in alignment with the inner work of spirit, I feel a lot more at peace. It lets me know that I don't have to be happy and bouncing and all over the place all of the time because even when I'm challenged, I'm doing the inner work that really is that energy that is within. And I will find joy and I will continue finding ways to be that fun person that people want to play with. And yet I don't have to expect myself to be up here. I can be here. I can be normal in my human experience. The energy flows through me. The fact that I'm not sitting on the couch as a bump on a log is evidence of the fact that energy is flowing through me instead of being stagnant. Spirit, <laughs> Spirit loves us and wants to be the very best human version of ourselves that we can be, which means that it is going to bring us all sorts of opportunities for inner work. I do it all the time. Ask my husband. Sometimes I might do it a little bit too much. <laughs> it's, I'm like, but what if I do this? Did I do this wrong? Like, do I need to adjust this? And what am I doing here? And, and, and why did I react that way? And how should I fix this? And maybe I need, like, there are times that you just need to sit and be in the moment and recognize that it's okay. And spirit loves you regardless. Spirit is here working through us. We get to allow all of the limitless energy to flow through us while assisting us with the inner work and the expansion and growth of being human. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to talk today because it, even though it was such a challenge throughout these last two weeks, like how am I going to talk to these guys about energy when I feel so low energy and I don't feel up and excited? And yet, all through these past couple of weeks, when these little nuggets would come through, it was like, okay. And it helped pull up a little bit. And it helped remind me, it's okay. What you're doing is absolutely perfect and human and normal and good and wonderful. And you will be able to do more and go further because you chose in. Because you decided that it's okay to stand and say, you know what? The energy flows through me even when I don't feel like I want it to flow through me because I want to sit on the couch. Um, it's okay. It makes us more human. It makes us more connectable. It makes us even better. So I hope the next time that you are challenged and emotional, that you're having a difficult time, that you remember that that energy flows through you. You have a choice to move. You have a choice to embrace that moment and allow yourself a pause. Allow yourself the gift of acknowledging that this is true, this is real in this moment, and it will pass because it flows through. It won't get stuck as long as you choose to continue moving, continue learning, and continue doing that inner work that is so beautiful and so healing. Thanks. <laughs>